started here at 6 o'clock, and since uh, we have some board members that are present, we have to call this thing to order. There's going to be kind of people, lots of stuff going on this evening, so there'll be people moving in as we do this. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, we're going to open this thing up, so we're right at this time. I call this meeting of the Mount Vernon Independent School District to order. That the record shows that a quorum of board members is present. But this meeting has been duly called and posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. In the motion to certify our agenda. That's the motion made by Robert, seconded by Leanne. And Leanne is going to lead us in a prayer here before we do our pledges. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the opportunity for us to gather as a community tonight to Lord, Lord and listen to each other. And I just pray your word over this room right now. That we be slow to speak, quick to listen, and that we invite wisdom into our hearts. That knowledge be pleasing to our soul. May discretion watch over us and understanding guard us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right, let's start uh, heads up and we'll do our pledges here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you, Mr. Sanders, and thank you folks for being here tonight. Let me give you a little kind of rundown on how this will go. I'm going to share with you information uh, about um, what we have found out and the reason why we're here tonight to have the discussion about four-day school week. Uh, part of that reason is, is the board has asked for more information on this, um, so they asked me that back in January. So we began to do some a lot of studying on it, reaching out to other schools that are already doing it, we sent out, I think each one of you as staff members or as parents, community members, should have received a um, survey that I hope that you took the time to respond to. I'm going to share those survey results with you here tonight, and then I'll go through the presentation, and then I'm going to allow you the opportunity to ask questions. I can tell you right now, we might not know all the answers to your questions. But what we will do is we'll take those questions down, we will do, uh, take the opportunity to answer those if we can and get those back out on our website. Okay? So here's a question I need to ask real quick. Is there someone in here who needs a translator? Um, Si todos los que necesitan que se traduzcan se sientan juntos, así no tenemos, tomaríamos más tiempo en traducir todo y así ya nada más les puedo decir lo que están diciendo. Thank you, Esmeralda.
So if you would like to uh, follow along, if the screen you might, you might not see the screen as well, but you can see it on your phone better, we want to give you that opportunity as well. Right there in the quick links, you see Mount Vernon ISD four-day school week presentation. That's where you can find it if you would like to look at it on your phone or a tablet. Okay, well let's jump right in. Again, I'll go through, um, and then at the end we, we, we will be here as long as you need to be to ask questions. Again, our board is here. As Aaron said, as you saw, we opened this up as a board meeting uh, so that we literally could have as many board members as we could here uh, in a quorum so that they could hear. Is there not any action going to be taken tonight? Uh, a calendar will be on the agenda uh, to be decided on on next Thursday, the March 9th board meeting. And um, so no action will be taken tonight. Tonight is just an information session. Okay. So how did we get to this point? As I said, our board uh, asked that we begin to gather information. And um, so this is kind of where some of the information that we found and where we are at this point here. This current school year, we approved a $400,000 deficit budget. <clears throat> we also began the school year with three classes that were not filled with teachers under contract. <clears throat> Our high school Spanish class started the year with a sub. Two weeks after school started, we were able to fill that with a contract teacher. We had uh, we have one position at elementary that was filled with a full-time substitute, and we had a high school science class uh, that we were not able to fill. So we we covered that through a, a change in the schedule. All right. What we've also seen, not just last year, but what we have seen over the last several years, and this is not just. Um, for Mount Vernon ISD, this has really become statewide, is there are less applicants for open positions than there have been in previous years. And as I said, that's part of why we had one of our high school science positions not filled. I also want you to see where we where we compare to, to districts that we that we do compete with around here. Again, we have two larger districts. We are what's considered a 3A size district. We have a 4A district to our west in Sulphur Springs, and we have a 5A district to our east in Mount Pleasant, and those are where we compare starting salary-wise. Okay? Even though we have probably onboarded more substitute teachers this year than we have in previous years, substitute teachers at times is still a challenge. We still have uh, some classes um, during the week that we are not able to get a substitute to fill and so we either combine that class with another or we cover with teachers who are uh, on their conference or we pull aides or uh, sometimes someone in the library we cover those classes however we can but sometimes it's not with a substitute teacher because sometimes we have more absences than we have substitute fill. Another thing that what we've seen here but also I think again as we're seeing uh, statewide and not just statewide I think nationally as well is uh, student and teacher mental health and like I said I don't know if you might have seen that at your own home um, if you are a spouse of a teacher you probably have seen something like that if you're even from your own students I can't answer it I don't know that anybody can answer it but I think that is something we've all seen not just in um, teachers or students but I think in society as a whole since COVID and um, and even though you might say it's not real, I can tell you come be around school for a poor amount of time and you'll be able to see that it is real. Okay? So that's a little bit of a little bit of bringing us to, to this conversation tonight to get feedback to see if the four-day week is something that is, is the right thing for Mount Vernon ISD. I also want to give you some information again, it's part of that conversation of, of why why even talk about four-day. Alright? So here's our current year. And what, what this is showing you is our staff and student attendance is down with Friday being the day that the most absences are, that happen. So as you see, current year on Monday, 94.6%. of This is student attendance. Tuesday, 95.1%. Wednesday, 95.2%. Thursday, 95.2%. And on Fridays, 93.5%. That's current year. You also see that in 1819, pre-COVID, our yearly attendance rate, which was normal for, 
up until COVID was almost 96%. I didn't put, you're sitting there saying, where's 1920? 1920 was COVID year, and so schools were considered, when COVID hit and we were out for two months, everybody was counted absent, when it, or counted present when it was looked at from attendance. So that, that number was inflated. So here's 2021 is down to 94.3, 21 and 22 is 93.7. And you say, why does that matter? Well, why it matters is because when a student's not in a classroom, they don't learn. They just can't. When they're not there in class each day, the days that they miss, they're missing instruction. <laughs> so here, another part of why, we, why we're looking at this again is from a staffing standpoint. All right? So this is a this shows you last year and this year the total what this is is the total number of absences for entire staff. It's not just teachers, it is entire staff from Mount Vernon ISD. We currently employ about 250 people. So what you see is we'll start there on the first six weeks of 21-22, every Monday in that six weeks, we had a total of all those Mondays put together of 84 people who missed Monday during that six weeks. Okay, not a, not a huge number. Okay, so I'll give you just a second to look at that. When you come to the far right, last year the average for six weeks, as you see, Friday was the day that was missed the most. Okay. On the bottom shows you this current year, 22, 23, up to the end of the four to six weeks. And as you can see, Friday is still our highest day that is missed and even at a higher number on average than it was the year before. Okay. This is just a graph to kind of show you the same numbers for those who are visual. Gray is 21, 22. The purple is 22, 23. Students 
School district saves money, 53, and all of the above was 99, and is, there is no advantage was 16. Okay? Next, look, if we move to a four-day school week, what week, what week would you prefer? The Monday through Thursday is the green, all from Friday. The purple is Tuesday through Friday, all from Monday. So pretty even split. Monday through Thursday, all Friday was 93 or 48%. Tuesday through Friday, all from Monday was 52%. What is your next question? What is your greatest concern with a possible four-day school week? There were 187 who answered this question. Child care was the first one. Almost 14% said child care was a concern. Quality of instruction was about 5%. Add additional minutes to the school day was about 15.5%. Loss of instructional time was a little less than 10%. Extracurricular impact was about 6%. And source of food for those in need was 20, a little over 21%, and no concerns was about 29%. Next was which schedule do you feel would be more beneficial to student learning? The first one in the green is the four day school week. Purple is the five day school week, and no preference is the yellow. Those numbers were four day school week at about 56%, five day school week was 17%. No preference was about 27%. Do you believe student attendance will improve with a four-day school week? Yes, it's green. No is purple. Yellow is maybe. Those numbers were yes, they believe student attendance would improve with a four-day school week at a little over 64%. No was 10% and maybe was a little over 25%. Okay. Next, would you be in favor of working one or two non-school days per month for staff development, campus grade meetings, independent work time, etc.? Yes is green, purple is no, yellow is maybe. Yes is we're at 60, a little over 62%. No is a little over 8%, and maybe was at a little over 29%. Now here's the, uh, parent survey. I didn't put the breakdown who answered. It was pretty evenly split, pre-K through 12. Uh, and just for space-wise and time-wise, but it was pretty evenly spaced of the respondents all the way for each grade level. Would you be in favor of four-day school week? We had 413 respondents to this survey. Yes, had it was about 64%. No was a little less than 20%, and maybe was about 16.5%. What is your greatest concern for a possible four-day school week? Again, this is the parent survey. Child care was a little less than 10%. Quality of instruction was a little less than 5%. Loss of instruction time was a little more than 11%. Adding additional minutes to the school day was almost 20%. Source of food for those in need was a little more than 5%. Extracurricular impact was a little more than 8%. And no concerns was 41%, a little more than 41%. Which schedule do you feel would be more beneficial to your students' learning? Green is the four-day. That was at almost 39%. Five-day school was uh, 22%. And my student would be fine with either option is a little less than 40%. Which four-day schedule would you be most in favor of if Mount Vernon ISD or uh, Mount Vernon ISD considering? There were 386 who responded to this. Monday through Thursday, all Friday is in green. That was at well over 63%. Tuesday through Friday, all from Monday was about little, almost 37%. Do you believe a four-day school week will improve student attendance? Yes, was at a little more than 53%. No, was almost 25%. And maybe was almost 22%. Do you believe a four-day school week will impact your family in a positive manner? Yes, was it 50, more than 57%? No, was it about 19%? And maybe was a little, almost 24%. What child care method will you most likely use on the day when school is not in session? Click all that apply, or check all that apply. We have 406 answers. Uh, child, using a paid child care provider was almost 18%. 
Other siblings was about 12. Other family members was about 24%. Friends' house, a little, almost 3%. Uh, Ultra my work schedule was about 13%, and no child care needed was almost 60%. Does your child participate in school athletics, football, volleyball, etc., or other school sponsored activities, FFA bands, etc., that regularly meet outside of the school day? 411 answered. At uh, 50, almost 54.5% yes, and 45.5% no. Okay, so that's the survey. Both um, teachers or staff survey and parent survey. Okay? So, a little bit of what we do know about four day school week right now across the state. Currently, this school year, there are 42 districts in Texas who are on a four day school week schedule. Over the last several months, and I, as, as we see more each day, there are at least 20 other districts that have already made the decision to change for next year. I know that others are like us that are having this conversation right now as well, and uh, their their district administration and board members are trying to make that decision if that's best for their district as well. Before COVID, there were only 21 districts on a four-day week schedule. As you can see, so over the last couple of years, that's increased, it's doubled. And so just for your reference, when, you're, when we're talking about calendars, it's no longer the number of days you have to be in school, but it is based on minutes. So for us as a district, we have to make sure that we have 7, 75,600 minutes at a minimum um, of instruction. Okay, so any kind of would it be four day, five day, six day, whatever, it has to be that many minutes, okay? And so I put on there, I didn't say that, but so when you look at a four day schedule, if you look to reducing number of days to a four-day schedule, you have to extend, you either have to extend your amount of time you're in school each day, or you have to extend the number of months you're in school, I guess. Okay? Here is, here are two, here's the 42 districts that are currently on a four-day, this is half, I'll go to the next slide, the other half. These are schools that are currently in four-day school district right now. I can tell you that pretty much all of them would be considered rural. Um, the majority of them um, are smaller than we are. Uh, Jasper ISD is bigger than we are. Um, Try to think here. I think Liberty Independent School District. When I was looking at, that, I think they have over 2,000 students as well. Oregon Camden is about the same size as we are. Athens is a 4A district. They are bigger than we are. Here's the other list of students. Mineral Wells is a 4A district as well. They're about the size of Sulphur Springs. Um, ones closest to us are on the bottom that are currently in a four-day schedule. That is New Boston, Hubbard, Paul Pewitt, Malta, Sulphur Bluff. Decab is not on the bottom. Maybe it was on the front page. But those are those are those are districts that are the closest to us who currently um, have a four-day schedule. Okay, this is again as part of my instruction to administrators, and they're here to answer help answer questions when we come to the question answer time. Is uh, was to reach out to other districts who are there to get more information. I've talked to several superintendents who are part of, of um, four-day school weeks as well, and asked them questions of how it affects them, how their community likes it. This is some of the information that we have, okay? And I know these are some questions that are going to be asked, and this is not necessarily trying to front load, but these are honest answers of what we've seen and what, we, what we've been given from other districts. Because I know that even in part of our surveys, we just saw, saw child care, what happens on Fridays is a question and a concern, okay? So as I ask that question in other districts, as I've seen them make other presentations, whether it be at conferences or following up even with their own community, is that child care on Fridays or their day off is not an issue. What they say is parents use the same resources they rely on during summer and long breaks. Okay? Attendance has increased for both students and staff. Disciplinary infractions have decreased. They needed less substitutes. Teachers report having an improved work-life balance. Students miss less instructional time due to being off on Fridays. Gives teachers more time for planning, more intentional instruction, and neutral effect on student performance. 
And I'll be honest, that's, that's been one of my, my biggest questions, is what, what, does, what happens with student, uh, what happens with student performance? As we've looked at other districts who have, who, where they were when they were five day and where they are four day, it's been basically neutral. If they were, if their district was an A district, they stayed in A district. If they were a B district, they stayed in B district. And as you know, we're currently in A district, and that's right where we want to stay. We have zero desire to go backwards. Okay. I will say, in regard to uh, teachers having a report having an uh, important work life balance, I took the opportunity last week, reached out to a teacher friend of mine that I've known basically my entire life. She's an eighth grade math teacher and pre-algebra teacher at DeKalb Middle School. And, and asked her some of these same questions. So I know from a teacher standpoint, asked, how, how do I put, we currently have 173 instructional days, minus three because we were out because of weather. So out of 173 days of instruction, how do I now fit that into 150, 155? I asked her that question as well. I asked her if she, had, what happened to her scope and sequence? What happened to her pacing? Did she have to sacrifice some part of her instruction as an eighth grade math teacher to fit into it? Her answer was no. She said she had surgery uh, right before Christmas and before she went out for surgery, she was actually a week ahead from where she was the year before when they were five days. She said one of the greatest things for her was that what we have listed here, um, there in the middle, she said the work-life balance of having those, at times, those three-day weekends really, really helped. Okay? We've also had, has not caused an issue with student athletes not showing up to games or practices, because I know that's a concern. You know, football, baseball, softball, when you have a game, if it's on a Friday, volleyball, basketball, whatever, band, are their students still showing up? From what I've seen in the superintendents and coaches that I've talked to, the answer is yes, they still show up. Well, they also said, said allowed coaches more time to balance the duties of teaching and coaching. Allows more time in band periods. Allows a full court band, allows a full warm up, daily drills without being rushed on a Friday when the school was in session as they're getting ready for a Friday night football game. Allows for a full rehearsal on game days. Now, also had one of our elementary teachers reach out. Again, I've encouraged this as well. I hope that other teachers who are here, staff members who are here, I hope that you take the opportunity to, to do the same thing. If you, if you have questions or concerns about the school day, I encourage you to reach out to another staff member at one of these four-day schools that I've shown you. Reach out to them. Ask them those questions as well. Ask them personally what has it been like. So we had an elementary teacher, one of our elementary teachers reached out to a teacher at a, at a four-day district. I'm not going to say which district because I don't have her permission to do so. But this is straight from the email that she shared with me and with board members. Okay? So what you're going to see is even a little uh, small contradiction at times in regard to what even we, that some of the uh, benefits or some of what we've learned from other schools as well. So here's the pros that she included in her email to myself and the board members from what that teacher at that district said. The teachers have ended up really liking it, and applicants have increased. Many elementary teachers were working on weekends. This gives us a Friday free if they need to work in their rooms and they can still enjoy Saturday and Sunday. I also see in participating in teachers getting together for a lunch on free Fridays. Another interesting and unexpected thing I've seen are groups of teachers leaving after school on Thursdays and taking a three-day weekend trip together. This has been good for mental health, Friendship building in campus cohesiveness. And also says parents adjusted quickly. Some of the business in town also went to a four day week and seemed to like it. Again, this is not my words, this is straight from the email. Uh, board members can verify that who've seen that same email. These are the cons. So again, as you saw a while ago, I, I was showing you some of the things that seem to be pros from other districts that we've talked to. This is her words. It hasn't reduced teacher absences. And that was one of the expectations. Maybe it's still the after effects of COVID, but we seem to have more absences and almost no one had planned to be a substitute. The long days were difficult for a few weeks. 
Teachers have to teach to the max every single minute. Going into the year, the model we laughingly used was Thursday is not the new Friday. Every minute has to count. Okay? Again, that's that's from a teacher's mouth of, of her take on the four-day school week. And I will say that her district has been doing it for multiple years. We're not that district is not one of the brand new districts that's just now going into four day. Okay. So now some of you are saying, well, what does a four-day calendar, what will that look like for Mount Vernon ISD? Again, this is a draft version of what we've put together of what that could look like. Again, if you remember a while ago, I said the minimum number of minutes that we have to get would, re would, would require, what back to say here, so we start the, we would start, if we were to start with this calendar, we'd start on Monday, August the 7th. Teachers would start August 1st. The blue Fridays that you see throughout the calendar would be the, the days that teachers would be required to be here on campus for staff development, RTI planning meetings, and even the possibility of when we get throughout the year of bringing students in who need some, uh, some extra help as well. Okay? You still have a full week at Thanksgiving. There's still the two weeks at Christmas, still spring break. This is still the same breaks except for maybe Columbus Day in October. Good Friday would be off as well already. <coughs> and we build three, the last three Fridays are actually bad weather days, so in case something does come up, that you know that those Fridays will have to be made up. Because the, this calendar here has 76,500 minutes. So no room. Starting times to get the number of minutes. Now again, this is draft. Could be changed. But remember, if we start later, we go longer. If we want to get out earlier, we have to start earlier. Because we have to meet the minutes. On this calendar, there's 150 student days. Teachers have 164 days. Elementary start time would be 7.45. End time would be 4.15. Middle school, high school, the end time would be 7.50 with an end time of 4.20. Not for sure, but I'd say right now we require staff to be here 20, 20 minutes before school start time. So you can back that up to Say probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 715. Around that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How, how we currently discuss the question is for the middle school, high school, would there be additional classes added? What this does is we don't add additional class period, you add additional time to those class periods. Okay, good question. <coughs> Currently, right now, middle school, high school classes are 45 minutes long. Our, our goal would be to, we'd have to make some adjustments with a couple other things, but the goal would be around 57 minutes per class. Yes, ma'am. That is an ongoing conversation. That definitely something we're looking at. Just again, this is all again. If it, we, we try not to make too many for sure, or what we would do, not knowing if this is definitely what we're doing. But but that is a conversation. Of what, that would be something that we'll be looking at as well this time. Question was asked: Will they be given extra snacks for coming to school longer? Um, that is one of those answers we will have to give you later. We don't have that answer yet. Okay. Ms. Desiree, do you want to answer that for us? Snacks, extra snacks, do you want to mention that? Yes, um, that is something that we have talked about and um, stand up. That is something that we have talked about. We don't have any plans to live out of place. Uh, but we have had discussions on if a student is going to 
bring their, their own sack or going to be provided. We do have a lot of kids with allergies, and so that is something that we have talked about. Just to so again, that answer, we, we don't have that answer for sure yet. That's not the decision that's been made. Yes, sir. I can probably be fine. Okay. What is the longest bus route you have right now to pick up the stop? Mr. Bobby, longest bus route? Hour and 45 minutes. Hour and 45 minutes? So you're potentially asking an extra hour, on you know, 30 minutes in the morning and an hour on the end of that. Correct. So you've got a totally 12 hour day. Very well could. Right? Yep. Sure could. Yes, ma'am. Days worth of extra minutes built into this calendar. So, a total of two days. No, no, no. Well, that, that's that's a different that's a different conversation. What you're talking about in regard to absences. What this is is what the state says is the minimum number of minutes that we provide as instruction. Now, the attendance issue is the 90 percent. Okay. So again, this year reduces. The number of days that a student can be absent and still meet the 90% rule. Okay? Make sure this as well. So, staff, staff members who are here, as you know, um, the state gives us as staff five days of leave. And as a district, our board approves, has approved for several years, that you get four days of local leave. So, there are nine days that you get to use throughout the school year that you still get paid for and you're not not for. You also have to understand. From going from 186 work days that we currently, our, our contracts are for now as a teacher, as a staff member, going to 164, that means your daily rate increases. Which also means that if you get past the nine days of leave that you have, if you don't have any banked up, that that day that your pay is docked is now docked at a higher rate than it would be this year. So we would still get our, the district would still provide the that is the plan as of, yes, as of right now. Yep. Yes, ma'am. What about your hourly employees? Hourly employees are, we've not completely worked out that plan, but I tell you that our, that our um, plan is not to reduce salaries at all, even for hourly employees. Okay, so moving to a four day is not to decrease the amount of money that they take home. So again, there will be some, some, uh, IRS requirements that we'll have to go through, some HR things that we'll have to settle on and make right, uh, but we do not plan for them to take on any less. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, according to Google, there's about, according to Google, there's about 1,020 districts, school districts in Texas. In Texas, correct. So we're talking 40 or 50 of us being my laboratory rats here, so it's not a trend. I just want everybody to think about that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, so those, those blues, all staff, all staff would be here on those days. Right. So the answer to that question is, is how this, we have not built those days in as extra days. I mean, we've not, that would be a different color. So I'll just, just pick out, say, what you're asking if on September the 22nd, which is not a blue day, if we were to do, which we don't have that, so intervention would take place on the blue day. Okay, so it stays there will be here. Okay, so, but, but, let's, but let's answer that question. I mean, let's, let's carry that a little bit because I, I think for staff, Staff have to understand that your your salary is still the same, even though you're required to work, you're going to be required to be here 164 days. You're still being paid. So, kind of what, what we're saying is, those Fridays you will be required to be here, but that's not you're working on an off day necessarily. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, you will be required to be here. So I mean, here's the reality of what we saw a while ago. You know I mean? Teachers, if you'll be honest, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I want everybody to understand. As a teacher, how many of you throughout this school year have worked, let's say, let's say the day into four, I know it doesn't, how many of you have worked past four o'clock or you've worked on a Saturday or Sunday preparing or grading papers? Teachers? 
So, I mean, so part of what part of what we're seeing is part of what we're saying is on this right here is is other districts are seeing. And again, I'm going what they've done. We've not done it, but what they're seeing is that Friday that that even though it's considered an off-day, teachers are being able to use that Friday so that they get to enjoy the Saturday and Sunday with their families no different from non-teachers. You know what we're seeing. Okay? Any other questions about this four-day calendar as it looks right now? Yes, ma'am? Um, are y'all stuck on Fridays being the off-day? Because I know, like, my daughter's doctor, they don't work on Fridays. Can I just speak freely as superintendent? Personally, I'm going to speak to Jason McCullough. I, I believe that if we're going to give a day, that we're going to change to a four day. For me, I believe Friday's the day. Here's why from a student standpoint, and here's why from a teacher standpoint. Correct. But here's what I'm saying with that right there. If what we're trying to do is make sure that we're maximizing every opportunity of instruction that we have, such as right now, um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Can you make, you were where I was going, but I'm not going to put you on the spot unless you want to say I'm it. I'm here. Summer school, and we provide transportation for summer school. Yeah, yeah. 
Good questions. Thank you. Being here than being in school eight hours on that day plus doing that. 
you know, and again, for those who are part of everything, yes, you're going to be here probably the majority of those Fridays. Uh, but for students who are just in one activity or two, those breaks become important for them as well. No, I don't need answers to the quick okay. part question was on the slide stating the other school districts already doing this have not had an increase in substitute applicants, so I'm sure that follows over the four times. Also, uh, a study by the Economic Education Review Board found a correlation between a four-day school week and 20% rise in juvenile property crimes. That concerns me. With, uh, in 2021, this school district, there were 59% that were economically disadvantaged. So are they going to use, and also is there Google Classroom assignments going to be increased, therefore putting them stress the students at home on Fridays, trying to get more online work done. If my grandson needed help with Trey at home, he failed because I'm not helping him. <laughs> I can't read. So that's my answer. So I'll answer the second part of that. If I understood your, what you were saying, if, if I said what, what I'm about to say is not, please correct me. I took it, you were asking, will there be Google Classroom assignments on Fridays that they're not here? That, that answer would be, should not be unless it's homework related. There will not be, not it, it will not be because you're not in school Friday, here's an assignment that you got because you're not here on Friday, such as it was in COVID. It'll be four days of instruction, and again, if on Thursday there's homework that was given, then they have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to do it. It will not be an additional day of, hey, here's you Friday work on Google because we're not in school. Yes, ma'am. Hi, okay, I teach fourth grade math. And just to kind of go answer Charlie's question, hopefully this helps. Um, while the trend is not we're going to 40 weeks, the trend is teachers are leaving. Teachers are leaving the profession completely. Um, my husband has asked me three times in the fall, he has begged me to just be done because of burnout, how I am with my own kids at home. I give my all to my kids all day long. And I can assure you, all of these fourth grade teachers and these third grade teachers right here, we teach bell to bell. So the quality of education is there. The, if we're gonna be here longer, we are bell to bell, working, working, working. And there is a difference when you have teachers leaving the field or going in these districts, teaching four days a week. A, a warm body in a room is not the same as a quality educator in a room. So to the board, keep that in mind that I'm just coming from a teacher. I want to work with high educators. I want my kids to have these high quality educations from these great teachers, not just who can we pull to fill a job. Thank you. Other questions you have? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Period. 
you're not gaining any instruction time, you're just shortening the days it's over, correct? That yes. made three minute difference about my math. Yes, ma'am. being recorded will be on YouTube tomorrow if we get it up there. Just wanted to let everybody know that. That's why we're doing this. So if anybody missed it, all this will be on YouTube. Other questions or comments? Again, this please, this is your opportunity. The board is here. They are listening. Um, again, so please, if you have a concern or a thought, a question, yes, ma'am. Okay, so in that other districts, their campus ratings have not changed, right? They stay, if they were A, they stay the same. But how many consecutive years? Is that just after one year of four day week, or do we have any campus that's it's, done it? It's, uh, it's basically about a three to four year window. Okay. So, like so I said, there was, what I looked at, there was one that went down and one that went up and others remained neutral. Okay, but more specifically, can you look at test scores? I know there's a lot that goes into the rating besides test scores, is that correct? So, that's fine if the rating stays the same, but what is happening to student performance? I know you said neutral, but what is that based on? Is that test scores or just, what is that based that's on? That's based on the accountability that we're able to see on paper reports. And it's also based upon the superintendents and school people that we've talked to. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm Saturdays. There's no longer track meets on Saturdays. 
track meets are now. We have a matter of fact, we were supposed to have a track meet in Palmer's on Thursday. That track meet, because of weather, has now been moved, and that track meet is taking place right now on Tuesday. So again, usually the only thing that takes place on weekends are going to be tournaments that roll into either a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or a Friday, Saturday, or playoffs. Sometimes we'll go into Saturdays as well. And again, that's not that's not a one school decision. That would be everybody being a part of that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Question, comment? Um, I teach dyslexia here at the elementary, and in response to your question, I, almost, I also reached out to several school districts that I know um, are, have gone to four day work week. And I reached out to high school and interventionists, all levels, down to, to pre K, actually. And um, all the teachers said that they really enjoyed it, that they packed in all that they could, teaching bell to bell, and that their mid year benchmarks have not changed. So they are not losing um, anything by going to the four day work week. And they all really love it. Both parents and teachers enjoy it. I know that, um, oh, what you just said, Athens ISD started in 18, 19, maybe? I want to think the 18, 19 school year when they started uh, the four day school week, they said they were basically it was a um, pilot program that they were going to do as a district. They would do it for three years and revisit. I believe that that third year they came, this year was, last year was the end of three years. So they came and their decision as a board was to continue on with the four day school week. Uh, I know the DCAP ISD started last year, or no, started this year, sorry, during their first year, their board just adopted another four day calendar to continue uh, based upon what they've seen this year. Yes, ma'am. So you started the school year with a $400,000 deficit budget. Yes, ma'am. You lose that Friday. Are you going to make up that budget by doing that? I'm going to know how this is going to Well, so, so from a budgetary standpoint, really and truly going to a four day is, is not going to make much of a difference. The reason I bring out the $400,000 deficit budget is because what we're looking at in regard to basically teacher pay. And again, if we're going to try to be competitive, what I'm showing by that number is right there is we're not going to be able to boost salaries above what the step, current steps we have set right now unless the legislative session changes that. Which there's talk of that changing right now as well to, to boost teacher salaries. So again, from a cost saving standpoint, it'll be minimal. Really, electricity is still here. 75 to 85 percent of our budget is based on um, uh, salaries anyway as our largest piece of our budget. Is there still growth so like our kids that are going to RTI and our kids are getting interventions or even special education? Like how, how do those minutes work? Because our RTI kids go five days a week. So if you take out a day, well, then you add minutes, maybe instead of 30 minute class, they're going 35, 40 minutes. Well, then that's, now they're missing more instruction time, you know, more time in the gen ed class or or sped. Like how do, I don't know how this how, how does the special ed minutes work out because now you're taking a five day week and you're cutting it down. So what what are, are there any numbers or is there anything with to that population? That, that's a that'll be a scheduling like a daily class scheduling conversation that we've not finalized yet. So I was with the special ed director for a uh, neighboring uh, Consolidated school that has eight schools in their, in their uh, co op and four other school districts on a four day week. This is the biggest benefit they've seen overall has been with their special population students, uh, especially those with behaviors. They've decreased behaviors and it has drastically improved um, the morale of the teachers that are in those classrooms. The adjustments that have been made have been made individually in their IAPs to make sure they can meet their minutes based on how many days a week they're in. Other concerns, questions, comments? Class without meaningful dollars of core instruction. 
So they're only, yeah, they, they get full four days oh, a week. Is that, is that Another question, yes, right there. Who will make the final decision? The board makes the ultimate decision on the calendar. Okay, so the first survey that was staff, correct? And the majority was yes on a four day school week. Yes. And the second survey was parents. Yes, and the majority was again, yes. Now, were staff that had children, were they able to do both surveys? The staff? It was open to them, and I'm sure that it, it was, was open to them. Oh, okay. So that second survey could have had the majority of the staff that said yes, also included on the parent survey. Possible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And also, I had a little comment about the um, daycare is an issue. I haven't heard from a lot of parents, but as a parent, daycare has been an issue since I had moved to Mount Vernon. Okay, share your doctors about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. I'm not originally from here. I have no support system. Okay. I just have me and my husband. And it's been hard being in Mount Vernon. But I came here because Texas is better, as y'all know. And Mount, <laughs> and Mount Vernon specifically because y'all are the top rated school district in all the districts around here. I hear nothing good about, you know, teachers and stuff that come here. But the daycare waiting lists are full. I went to Mount Pleasant. I went to Sulphur Springs. I had to change my job to get an at-home job because I couldn't find daycare for my kids during the summer. And then when I did, I paid $300 a week to take for one day a week. Okay? That was the daycare I could find. And I don't know what kind of salary people are having around here, but that's a lot of money to most people. So where are we getting the daycare isn't an issue? Because it is. Okay, so that statement was made from previous schools that was not specific to Mount Vernon. I will say that I've had the opportunity, I think we have three major daycares. I had the opportunity to talk to two of the three. I Tried to talk to the one at um, the Methodist Church, but was not able to talk to them. Um, talked to Brother Pepper at First Baptist. He said they had the conversation at the school was four day. They will add staff uh, to be able to take on additional students on on, on Fridays. I uh, also talked to um, little Miss Debbie. Debbie. Yes, talked to Miss Debbie, and um, she said that she she would be able to add some. She, she felt that it would be have a negative impact on her from the longer day because of the number of students that she picks up after school or after school program. Uh, she felt it would be a, have a negative effect on her. Uh, so, but she did say there were, of course, on Fridays that she she thought that she could have some room to add some additional students as well. Yes, ma'am. No, no, I'm sorry. That was something we need to take into account. I apologize. Yes, I do think that probably the numbers would have been completely different had we had a paper option. A lot of parents probably don't even have access to email, and those parents are probably the ones that are going to be struggling as well with child care. And like her, I have struggled with child care even one or two days a week. Okay. And it is very, very high prices. Okay. So that okay. is an issue. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for making us aware of that. Thank you. Okay. Are you do you get any of the updates on the school when the school was there or something? So I think that's how we sit down through our campus live program, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're gonna be lucky not to get I received it this way. I received an email, but there was nothing to click on. Okay. okay. Thank you for making this work. Speaking to the child care, I have a huge support system. I have a ton of family here and a ton of friends, but Fridays would still be an issue for me. Um, you know, I'm a nurse and there's burnout in all professions since COVID, um, not just teachers. So it almost feels like we're being accommodating instead of making people accountable. Yes, sir. 
I have a question regarding billing. So if we go to a four day school week. Regarding what? I'm sorry? Billing. Billing. Bills. Water. Bills. Okay. So, <laughs> so if we go to a four day school week, where does all that money go? Because you're going to save money on lights and water usage. Again, that, that'll be here. You're correct. Where does all that money go? Does it go back to the kids? Does it go back to the students? Does it go back to the teachers? So that would go toward that four hundred thousand dollar deficit. Is what that would go to. Question or coming here? I guess this kind of goes back to the bus, but what I guess I don't know how early the kids are getting on the bus, and they said it's going to add possibly an hour and a half after school. So we're talking four thirty. These kids aren't going to get home till six o'clock at night, and then have to do dinner and homework and turn around and do it again the next day. I do realize that 7.30 in the morning is very early, but have we thought about adding some morning? I don't know how early other kids get on the bus, but... Okay, so obviously we don't really want to go any earlier. I get that, but that does make for a very long, long day. Thank you, yes ma'am, thank you. <laughs> yes ma'am. So how we are trying to address that this year, again, that is a projected budget that the board approved at the beginning of the school year. And so through that, at that time, that was built on ADA based upon the previous year. We have increased about 60 students, which, which almost covers that. If, if they show up, the amount of time to, to improve the ADA, which we're going to point. Uh, also throughout the year, we look at the opportunity of trying to adjust that in regard to other areas, whereas maybe there's some budgetary supplies that... that and talk about class use. size and our class size, you know, on the budget, you know, so talking about budget things and cutting budgets, class size is a major concern of the board here. And when they look at it, let's say, you know, your administration looks at it, they're looking at, you know, that's the quickest way to cut a budget is to lower your staff. So you, you take one teacher off every grade level of this, um, your elementary down here, your class size is going to go up seven or eight kids. I don't know what the number would be. And that's another reason we can stay in a pretty high rated district is, is we stay all over them about trying to keep this class size down. So that's, you know, that's another reason we want to keep quality teachers. Because all of these teachers I say that I see in here, I love every one of them. And, you know, when we have our awards, well, we have a board meeting, we do teachers of the month and different things. Every month you're like, how do we get so blessed to get these teachers up here? So that's the same that we're looking at is, and man, this is a hard decision. You know, when somebody asks a question, who makes this decision? There's seven board members. They're gonna bring us some recommendations and, uh, and I'll shut this, we're gonna do some more questions in a minute, but Alan from the newspaper left a while ago, but one thing he said to me before this meeting was, the difference in y'all and these other districts, and he's involved in a lot of other districts with newspapers, is the difference in y'all and them is y'all have this meeting and you're listening to the public where most of them don't they just go in there and they get some stuff so we're in here trying to absorb all of this and it goes up and down different ways so we ask for your prayers as we kind of continue this too so just wanted to kind of have y'all I'll, I'll point Chandra out sometimes we'll get her on the spot and I'll say what's, what's her class size in third grade average like that so I won't do that tonight but I know it's not uh, it's not as low as I'd like it to be, but we're not as high as, as a lot of these districts like we're talking about. Dallas ISD, Fort Worth, they, those guys may be against it, but they may have to give a state waiver too to have 26 or 28 kids in the class. And that's hard to teach kids when you have that many. Yes, sir. Hello, uh, I'm one of the managers. And so uh, I just want to say that uh, just like we'll be adapting as a community, teachers will also adapt to uh, what baseline homework come out, um, just how we're gonna teach with the less days. So just realize like how you see the five day week, that will probably change also when we go to four day, when, like time after school and all that kind of stuff. So uh, nothing really is for certain. And each program will be uh, affected differently based on who we're leading it. So as a band director, I would look at maybe not having a Tuesday night rehearsal, because we have Tuesday night rehearsal for like three hours. We probably wouldn't do that if we had, you know, four days and we had 
I'll be afraid to work on stuff, whatever. So just realize that, like, if you're looking at it in a five day and cramming that four, it will look different because we would also have to. So keep that in mind. And thank y'all for being here. This is also, I love seeing more here than to voice your concern. Thank you, sir. Who else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, another calendar option, or is that the only option? We're getting to that point in just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Parker. Yes. Um, the number of survey, 413. What percentage of, is that 413 students represented in our district? How many students do we have? Like, how many, what response did we really get? From so we, we, in, we talk about that <laughs> in regard to, we have 1,560 students give or take a student right now. So if you're going to say that each of those students <laughs> average is 1.5 parents, so if that's the case, then if we had 400 responses, you're looking at about maybe 25, 30 percent. <coughs> well, multiple kids, so maybe, well, that might even push the percentage up even a little bit more with the number of responses according to the number of kids they have in each house. So possibly, I mean possibly, what are we talking about? Possibly half, maybe? Can I add on? Okay, so say two parent households, could both parents have taken the survey? Yes, ma'am. And then those could also be teachers. Yes, ma'am. They could be counted four times, potentially. Could, potentially, yes, ma'am. Yes. I have a question about a couple that one. Did, did a, a families here, did both parents get one? Because my husband, he registered in his email as a name one. Mine was not accepted as a name one, but it's not there. But I didn't get the email, but he got one of the answers. Anthony, so how can we answer that question in regard to that? So I was saying, so it might not be uh, two parents. I have one in high school and two parents. So it went to the, sorry, I just heard that. It went to the primary email address.
Um, so what I'm getting from a lot of the teachers, and I really do, like I feel sorry for y'all, I could not do it. Could not, not for me. But the majority of what I'm hearing is the problem is the workload. Like y'all don't have enough time in the day to do your work and finish what you need to do. The workload doesn't come directly from the students, right? So if the workload is the issue, why are students being affected? Why are we taking away from children when children aren't really the cause of the original issue? And the teacher administrator wants to comment on that? Yes, the workload is awful for me, but it is also awful for, awful for my students because they are stressed out, they're absent, they're missing things for other school events, now they're an extra day behind. If I was not teaching on Friday, those 35% of my students would not have fallen behind, even more than they already were. Okay. And for me as a teacher, that's where it's coming from. Yes, it's my workload. Yes, I need to plan for four different high-level math classes every week. I need to grade those papers for four different level high math classes. I work closely with NTCC to teach the dual credit classes so I also have to plan with them. But when my students struggle, I now have to take more time to work with them and help them. I have to find the time in the day that they already are overbooked to get them to come in and do this. If my students do not have academic stuff on one day, Again, I'm saying Friday from my point of view because of how many students I miss on that day, then they're not behind. And on those days where I have to plan, I can plan, or I can call them in and say, hey, between your practices, why don't you come see me and let's work this out. Hey, between your jobs or whatever, come see me, let's see what we can figure out what you can get done. So for me, yes, and as far as the teacher burnout and everybody's burnout, I see 100 or so people every day, just students. And not only am I dealing with my chest, I'm dealing with theirs. I'm trying to teach teenagers how to deal with anxiety, depression, overload, how do I manage my time? They need time to be kids. They need time when they're not having to do homework for me or homework for somebody else or go study and go to this. I have students skip a day of school because they're trying to get caught up with their four essays, three projects, and whatever else they're trying to get done. And so now they're even more stressed when they get back because now they're even more behind this, this words of this your class. What do I need to do? My kids need that day. They need it all. And I say my kids because all my students know they're my kids. Even at high school, I have high school senior girls that call me mom. Hey, mom. And it's not anything just the real moms. The real moms know I love them to death too. But you know, it's even simple than hey mom, do I have a pencil? Hey mom, do you have lunch? Hey mom, I just need to come in here and vent to you. I'm stressed out. I'm like, okay, come on. And that's what they do. So yes, overload me, but I'm also trying to teach a hundred other people how to deal with their overload. And I think they need that day. They need a day where they're not falling even further behind. I'm just curious what other options were considered before coming to the four-day debate. We're going to get to other option calendars as soon as we finish the question. I'm going to provide you some options that, 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 were being, that are being looked at as well. And uh, I mean, options, and when I think of that, is I lose the teachers as an option. You know, as far as calendar goes, is that what you're asking calendar-wise? But as far as the option on what I'm looking at, how do we retain good quality teachers? How do we yes, that's what I'm asking. So that's, that's, yeah, that's an option. Do we, do we sacrifice here? Do you sacrifice there? Because Ms. McCoy and somebody else may have a little different kind of class situation, so we have to weigh all of that out. How do we keep the best here to keep this bit the best where people can move in here or us keep our kids here? So those are the options that I'm thinking of. Thank you for clarifying that. He's going to show you a couple of calendar options. Sorry for my misunderstanding the question. Thank you. My concern is, too, sometimes when kids have too much free time, they get in trouble. 
<laughs> so that's, and me as an adult, even I teach my daughter, she wants to play baseball, dance. You have to pick and choose in life. So maybe some of the kids in high school are doing too much of dance that they're not able to do the work. Hang on, hang on just a second. Um, Ms. Forrest, my child is one once missing Friday, <laughs> and you're absolutely right. And let, and I talked to him about it here. Uh, you know, he takes high level classes and college courses. He wants that extra day to do homework. He wants that extra day to write his papers. He wants those, that extra day to do studies. That day will benefit him. And then he can do all those extra, a lot of extra curriculars because he was gone on two extra curriculars Friday, so he was out all day. And, but it was a leadership program that was very beneficial to him, and it was a state of UIL that he made state at. So it's beneficial to him to do those things, but it also would be beneficial that he had that day that he could study. So, and then he wouldn't have to come to you. <laughs> you know who mine is, and he comes to you. <laughs> Just kind of piggybacking off what Mr. Sanders said, um, I have spoke to and contacted a few districts and talked to them, and they did have issues with trying to hire and retain teachers. Um, in fact, before they went to the four-day week, they were having to fill 16 positions. And this year, guess how many they're looking to hire? Zero. Last year, just to kind of give you some insight, we hired 23 staff members at the elementary. That's 23 new members that we had to recruit, and we didn't have a lot of applicants. We got on the phone, we called people, we asked them to apply. Um, but that is getting new teachers, getting some that didn't have the certifications, that takes a lot of time and resources. And I've heard from all of you, highly qualified teachers, okay? Good instruction. And so we've got to look at that. But one thing I do want to ask, I want to ask, and it's not really related to this, is that I've heard childcare, I've heard childcare. And while I do understand that, I understand that's a complication. But I want you to view our teachers, and I'm, elementary was well represented in here, that they are professionals. And I don't want you guys to know that. We expect them to be highly qualified. They are professionals. And I want to advocate for every teacher in this district. Yes, ma'am. I won't keep you long. I work at the high school level in administration, and I'm fairly new to that world, but I've been in this district five years, and I love it. I've invested my own child in this district, he's an eighth grader, who I tried to talk into speaking to not, but he's a little nervous. He doesn't get enough of his mom time, but I'm going to pour into all of your kids, I promise. I'm going to every day look at what's best for your children. And I know without a doubt what is best for your children is the best teacher. Because there's nothing I can do and add in that makes it better except to support those teachers. And there's nothing you can do as a parent than to support those teachers. So do look at that. I know every day your teachers, your kids' teachers go home with papers. I watch them. They study, they think. They're looking for ways to have more time to plan and look at what's best for your kiddos. And I will do the same. I make you that promise, whether it's four days, five days. That's what we want to do. But at the end of the day, we need the best to be here. And Mount Vernon doesn't have tons of teachers living here, but we have to find a way to do the best to be here with us. And from a high school point of view, when we put up a teacher job over a month and we get one or two applicants who aren't even certified for that job, it's tough for your kids to get the best. And so just keep that in mind as you go home and you think, and I'm not saying one way or the other, but I do know if you want the best to come, you have to give them the best. Okay. So as I said, we'll stay as long as we need to. We'll be sure that you have an opportunity. I don't want you to feel that you left and didn't have an opportunity to, to share your thought or concern. 
Okay, before you leave tonight, you're going to have an opportunity to give us, to give the board some more feedback. Go home and get some sleep, we'll see you tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Okay, Get back up. There's your four-day calendar option. That's a draft of what a four-day calendar could look like. Again, elementary is from 745 to 415, middle school, high school, 750 to 420. By taking off those Fridays, students end up with 150 days worth of being in school. Teachers are at 164. Okay, I want to show you three other opportunities three other counter options, and uh, kind of tell you, explain each one of them to you. When we finish, if you have a phone or a device, we're going to have a QR code, and we're going to ask that you share tonight with us, before you leave, your thought about the four different calendars, okay? Again, it's another piece of feedback for our board to take into consideration, and then what we will be doing tomorrow as well, we will be sharing this out with staff again. We will be sharing it back out with families, and we will make sure that we share it hard copy so that parents who do not have access to a computer can have the opportunity to see it as well. So, here is here's another calendar option. Again, so here's a lot of what you heard tonight was the opportunity for, for some mental health breaks, okay? So here's an option that allows some additional time for students and teachers, but it's not every Friday. It is, it is put into a week break in October and a week break in February. So in essence, what you would have, instead of like this current year school calendar has 173 student days, I believe, and 186 teacher days, it brings that to 178 teacher days, 166 student days, with the start time of, basically the start times are the same, and we've added 10 minutes to the end of the day. Okay? All the rest of the breaks, again, are the same. Still have a week at Thanksgiving, still two weeks at Christmas. Start time and end time is the same. So when you see the survey menu, when you see the calendar option for breaks, if you like this calendar option, it is the calendar option called breaks. End time is, so extends the day 10 minutes is what it does. Okay? Any questions on this calendar before I move to the next one? Here's one that is, that is we label it as a hybrid model. Okay? Again, trying to listen to the conversation of Fridays off or some additional time, four day a week for a benefit. Again, so of that, trying to meet somewhere in the middle of some four day weeks, but still having five day weeks, is that doable? So here's what, here's what this looks like. Start time and end time is the same as breaks. It adds 10 minutes, the same number of days, and adds 10 minutes to the day. But here's what a hybrid model looks like. And it truly is, I would consider, a hybrid. If you were to count it on each semester, we've added some days off throughout the semester. And you have, if I count it right, you have 10, 10 four-day weeks and eight five-day weeks each semester. Again. Start time is still the same on both campuses. All three campuses, end time adds 10 minutes to the day. <coughs> but there are breaks throughout. Okay? And then here's what next year's calendar would look like that reflects this year's calendar. So we're saying that's a traditional five-day calendar. Starting end times are the same. Starting again on the Thursday like we did this year on the 10th. Labor Day we still get, Columbus Day we still get, have a teacher work day, November the 6th, still a week of Thanksgiving, um, two weeks plus a day at Christmas, um, work day on the 8th and the 9th, is that correct? Yeah, yeah work day instead of the students would come back, and students would actually have a little bit longer Christmas break on this traditional calendar, would come back on Wednesday the 10th, 
still have the four day weekend like we did last weekend in, uh, last weekend here in February for students. Spring break, we have Good Friday, bad weather days on the Monday after Easter. A bad weather day in May, still finishing before Memorial Day. And I'll be honest with you, you know, when, when we're working on calendars in regard to what that looks like, to try to be able to, what we think and what we believe is honoring what the community wants, and that's to be out by Memorial Day, and then try to still have breaks built in. That's, that's how these calendars were put together. Okay? Any questions on any of these other three options? <coughs> I'm going to say you folks are awesome. You have hung in here a long time. I appreciate it. I greatly appreciate your willingness to come be a part of this tonight, share your comments and your questions. So here's where we're going to go with this right here. If you have a phone, I'm going to ask that you click on this QR code and it's a one question survey. Or you can type in the, um, the email address or the address here and go to the same survey. And just ask you which county do you prefer? Traditional, breaks, hybrid, or um, <coughs> four days there somewhere. So please share that. Please, please respond to that survey. We will have that again. It, now again, so guess what, parents? Tomorrow you should see another survey, this same survey that you're going to get to participate in again from a parent standpoint. Staff, you'll get the same thing from the staff standpoint. Tonight's information is for those who took the time to be here tonight to be able to do the survey. Here's also, if you do not have a cell phone and you would like to vote, please find one of these folks with uh, one of the pieces of paper. Please grab a pen from somebody and please share that with us so that you have an opportunity to vote as well. Okay? If, you, if you're here tonight, I want you to be able to participate. If you need a piece of, if you need a piece of paper, if you need, if you don't have a vote, if you do not have a phone, and you want to vote, please come see me. Okay, real quick, before we end, Board President, I need you to adjourn officially. Leave, but the board meeting has to adjourn. Board meeting is in business. Don't want to time. This meeting is adjourned at 737 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for.